I see here we have a Meow C3 complete uh, Hoover that stopped working. The um, motor started making a funny noise and there was a burning smell. Um, the Hoover turns on, but the motor doesn't run anymore. Um, so I'm pretty sure there's something wrong with the motor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it down, find out what's wrong with it, fix it, and then put it back together again. Um, I've taken the bag off and the nozzle off. Um, just for simplicity, so there's no bag in here. Um, so the best thing to do is to take the lid off. You just lift it all the way up, and it just pops out the top. And then there are one, two, three, four screws on the outside, and then there's another one under here. Under this filter, so we take the filter off, and then we undo all these screws. Uh, and when we undo the screws, we need to prise the top off the bottom. Um, the screw. Um, there's also a screw under this button, uh, so you need to take this button off. So I'm also going to take this other button off and just prise it off. Just the clips. Um, now this is just so that I can take this spring out. Uh, here and then I can get my Torx bit right down into this deep hole here which has another screw in it so undo this screw here right. so now I've got all the screws undone I should be able to just uh, pull the pieces apart so I'll do that take off the um, cover and then there's a rubber seal that goes around the edge so we'll clip that the screw is still in there that away okay um, and so now there's only one piece left which is this single back piece um, so we just need to undo the final screw that gets exposed when you take off the cover screws left around on this side there's a clip into the reel so you need to pull that bit of plastic out sideways and then there's a plug that plugs into the back here um, so you, you need to think about pulling it up and away as you, as you pull it off that's the back so now once you've done that you have access to the important piece which is the motor um, the motor just sits in the hoover um, and it just unclips so there's a, a connector here you just pull it out there's no clip or anything you just wiggle it and it comes out okay and then the motor just lifts out and there's a rubber piece on the back to um, reduce any vibration to go back in so you don't lose any bits so now we've got the motor out this one to one side, it on the motor. Um, so the motor has a rubber front which you take off and then it has a metal shroud and the metal shroud um, you can simply tap off, it's just a press fit. So just Inside, we have the impeller, which is the uh, piece that sucks up the dust. A little bit dusty. Um, and there's a screw on the front, and the screw on the front undoes clockwise and does up anti-clockwise. So this is where you need your socket. So you need to take your socket, uh, turn it so that it would normally be screwing a screw up, and then take your vice grips. Uh, did I mention the vice grips? You need some vice grips, um, mole grips, to hold the um, impeller tight as you unscrew. And then, whilst you hold the impeller tight, just simply 
and screw the bolt on top. So then um, uh, you unscrew the screw, there's a washer inside, so don't lose that. And that goes concave face down. Then you can take the impeller off. And then there's another washer underneath with a little ridge on the bottom. So remember how that goes. You can see that. And the impeller. Uh, and now you're into the guts of the motor. So we simply need to take the um, bolts out. There's four torque screws again. So we unscrew these. Okay, um, so now we have the motor in bits. The next step is to pull the motor apart. As you lift it out, those will come apart and bits will fly everywhere, but don't worry about that too much. We'll put it back together a bit later. Um, so you can see, yeah, so you can see we've got the motor, we've got the brushes, put them, the, um, the pieces back in the brushes because they've got a, a piece of wire in there you don't want to disconnect. So you've got two brushes, one for either side of the motor. Put those away in the bowl. And here we have the motor magnet, so this is where the brushes rub on. You can see that's um, slightly pitted and damaged. Um, and then this is the main uh, motor piece bearing on the back. Um, so one thing we want to do is remove the plastic cover from the bearing because when you try and put it back in later, you won't be able to get the bushes, the brushes in without uh, taking the. You won't be able to get the brushes in because the the you won't be able to get underneath the plastic cover. So. Um, the easiest way to do that is just tap it off the top and you've got the cover out of the way. So now we have the motor, so this piece is um, absolutely fine. Um, you can see a bit of wear but um, it's not a big problem. The um, motor itself seems fine, there's nothing damaged there. So inside here you have um, the outer coils and you have the wires going to the connector. So this is the back side of the connector that goes to the the um, electrical uh, socket that we pulled out earlier. So um, this piece of plastic on the top here is just a little cover and that unclips. So we just take off screwdriver. So you can see here um, the little plastic cover comes off. In here we have a, a circuit board um, and it has a couple of components on it. So what we want to do is um, remove that circuit board by pulling it backwards out of the motor so we can see if there's anything wrong with this part here because these are the only components in the motor other than the motor itself um, and it seems likely that that's um, something to do with why the motor is not working um, so these this board slots into the motor and there's two uh, blades one on each side that the board slots into and they make the electrical connection so to take it out you simply need to prise the 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 blades on each side out and to do that you can just get a small and eventually the socket will come out so now i have the socket which the um plugs into the vacuum controller and the uh, motor housing so the motor housing i'll put to one side um, and now the uh, PCB and the components pull out. Now, it's very hard to see, but if you inspect this PCB, um, you can see that the top component there, which is a triac, which is the piece of the little hole in it, one of the legs is burnt out. Um, so uh, this is quite a common fault. Um, the piece over here is some sort of uh, fuse, I believe, but this this track uh, regulates the current coming into the the board, and because it's burnt out, it's definitely not going to work. So um, even if this doesn't fix it, we definitely need to replace this track. Um, so what I've done is I bought a replacement. So this triac here, I'm guessing you can't see that on the video, is a T2050H60. If you Google that, um, you'll find they don't make them anymore. 
or at least I did. Um, but if you go to someone like Farnell, you can find a very similar track. Um, in my case, you, you can see they're physically similar. So you see they're physically similar, which doesn't mean much. Uh, but this is a 2035H6I. Um, if you look on the website, you can see broadly that they are a very similar component. The other one's been discontinued and uh, this is the newer version. Um, so I'm going to swap these over. So we need to get this component off this circuit board. So for that I need a, a solder remover and a soldering iron. So um, what I've got here is the component. You can see on the back the track is still attached uh, by two of its three legs. Um, and then turn around. I've got a soldering iron, which is pretty important. Uh, I've got some flux, which just helps make things stick a bit easier. And I've got the new track over here, which I'll be connecting. So the first thing to do is to remove the old track. Um, so um, what we need to do is, so the legs are this one and this one. So we need to heat up these two legs just to remove most of the solder. As we do that, we need to apply some pressure to pull the track out. So try and do this with one hand so you can see. So I've got my thumb under the track, which will melt the solder. Pulling on it to pull the legs out. So you don't want to put too much heat into it, although you're throwing this component away just in case it damages any of the other components. Almost out now. Apart from the fact it's burning my hand, it's going well. Um, so you can see the track is almost out of the pull each leg out individually which should be a lot easier there's one of the legs the other one just using my thumb here to put on the plier right just lodging the so, remove the old one, now I want to insert the new one, so the new one's got three legs, so I'm just going to stop, that, stop the camera and just uh, bend these over with a pair of pliers. So what I've done is I've bent the legs of the triac uh, the right amount, and now they fit in the hole that I want to get them to go in exactly. Um, so now it's just a case of I turn this over and doing the reverse, so melting the solder as it is it um, as I push it in and pushing the track into the board. Right, so in my own special way, I've soldered. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> I've soldered these back together, so you can see this is now soldered on, um, and it's sitting on the board. It's all very hot. So putting it back together is pretty much the reverse of taking it apart. So we have our board that's been um, soldered, the triax back on. I take all the bits and put them back together. So uh, first thing to do is to slot the connector back into the plastic container. And we take the motor body and we slot the plastic container back into the motor body. Um, so it's the it's the metal bit that slots into the the, the uh, clip. So you need to push the metal, not the plastic. That pushes back down. And then we take the lid. My pull up bits. Here we go. The lid. Um, we pop that back on the top. 
Um, so now we need to put the motor back into the, the casing. So making sure it's the right way up, so the, the piece that the brush is, hits is at the top. Push that in. And make sure it's it's down at the bottom. So give it a little tap with the hammer to make sure it's, it's pushed into the bottom. That's fine. And then the brushes. So the brushes have a little um, connector on the bottom and that goes into a connector on the motor just here. Um, so you need to compress the spring and pop the brushes in. Uh, I don't believe the brushes are directional, they're both identical. Pop that down in, so it makes a good connection. And get the other one. And pop that down in exactly the same way. both brushes in the casing uh, with the motor in the middle and the brushes are touching on the motor and now the next piece is the lid so the lid uh, you need to orient the lid so that the holes line up um, there are some little uh, grooves on the lid which match up with the grooves on the bottom so you can't get it wrong, uh, like so. Pop that in, and that should sit flush around the edge, ready for the screws to be screwed in. So now we take the four screws. screws have a, a small wash around the edge and these ones don't screw that in um, so that's now back together nice and solid uh, next piece is this washer note the way it goes so the, um, the, the ridge goes on the bottom uh, and then we have the uh, impeller uh, mine is actually a bit of a mess so I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes cleaning that up um, just knocking all the dust out of it okay um, so I've cleaned out my impeller uh, there was a load of plaster dust and some hair in it which is probably what caused my hoover <laughs> to stop working in the first place um, so it's nice and clean uh, completely empty no dirt in there um, so I put this back on top of the washer um, I put the other washer on top, um, reminding myself that the concave piece is underneath. And I put the bolt back on top. So the bolt screws up anti clockwise. Um, obviously, as you get it tight, um, it will start to turn the motor. So. Um, Find the place where you clamped it, clamp it again. It does damage the impeller slightly on the edge, but I think it's a price worth paying. Um, and then tighten it up. Right. So that's tight. Flatten that off. This is nice and tight. The impeller goes round, the bearings go round, and it feels good. Right. Um, next piece is the metal shroud that goes on top. Uh, this is just to push it. Um, it doesn't it doesn't have to go in any orientation particularly. Um, so it just pushes on top and just tap it down with a hammer just to get it. Okay. Um, and the um, impeller should turn smoothly inside there once you've done that so just check that's okay and then put the rubber piece on top and now we have the motor so now we're going to put the motor back into the body so um, I've put the rubber sleeve on top I've put the rubber grommets on the back it needs to be up this way so that the the um, clip is at the top and then it just slots down in 
straightforward. Uh, clip the clip back in. You're done. Um, so that's all in place. And then the next step is to put the pot back on. So um, I don't really have a great technique for this, but it's just a case of suck it and see. So let's. screw holes line up, this piece is clipped in, uh, sits nicely, um, at the back here, needs to come down slightly, that's okay actually, that's actually on, um, and then we need the screws, so let me just start popping them back in, so the first one is probably um, this one here. Uh, so this one at the back actually goes under the piece of plastic that goes round so it would be sensible. Um, I'll put this little one in first at the back, right under the handle. That one's in. It's sensible to put this shroud on. So this piece goes in. Uh, the screw goes in after the piece of plastic's gone in. It's a lot easier to get it in um, before the screw. So pop the screw down and in. Now we can put the uh, buttons back on. So there's a small V-shaped um, spring that just sits in the top there and then the comfort button which goes on the right which just clips down. Works and the power button on the left, which just clips down as well. That also works. Um, turn it around. Next piece to go on is the top. That just slots in the top. Uh, it's gone on easily. And then we have four screws around the edge. So to Put the four in the corners, and then there's the extra one that goes in the middle. Then there's the filter holder that goes on top. Put that in, and then the lid, which you need to take right up as high as it will go, and then slide it down. Um, and we're done. Um, Right, so the Hoover's all back together. Um, I think all that's left is to test that it works, so. Plug it in. Turn it on. Thumbs up. Um, we fixed my Hoover. It cost me eight pounds. Uh, I bought two Triacs and I had to pay postage. Uh, the Triac itself was about one pound 20, so. Uh, if you can get it cheaper, you can do it for a couple of quid. Um, that's it, really.